yes indians are considered brown and af with if you have african descent you're considered black but it's all just a social construct and it's just to create hierarchy and division i can't i just always wonder like what a beautiful world this would have been had the caucasoid race not created fucking race and it was all just to maintain supremacy to maintain supremacy so I've seen people in my comment section saying that Indian people are racist to dark-skinned Indians. That is not racism, that is colorism, and it is a problem in our community. I'd also like to say, like, people that's comparing us to the people in Z-World, please don't, we are nothing like that. We watch that as entertainment too, because it's so ridiculous. It's so dramatic, and the South African Indians are not like that. That's crazy. Where are you from? So we're from India. How long have you been in America? Nine months. What is the craziest thing you've seen in America or the thing that surprised you the most about America in your first nine months that you've been here? If you make a small mistake and then you're like, oh, I'm so sorry about it. It's like, oh, no worries. It's all right. It's all good. What is something about America that you like the most? I think it's a really big place to like look out for opportunities. Are you guys going to go back? Uh, not really right now. We're no. looking for jobs right yeah. now. Talk about the amount of racism that most Indian people have towards black people. You can just hear the desperate confusion in my brother's voice because it makes no sense. Think about it. You've got 54 countries that comprise Africa. Then you've got India, which is a part of this larger scale, historically, culturally, linguistically connected area that we consider South Asia. And factually speaking, there is this observable phenomenon of this anti-Black, anti-African sentiment within South Asia and within its diaspora abroad. You don't even have to think that deep to see that it makes zero fucking sense, bro. Watch this. Both regions have suffered a very similar colonial past under the same colonial powers. Both of us are living a very similar colonial present. Over the course of ancient and modern history, there's been so much cultural and economic trade between us. And not to mention, African civilizations have been harboring and giving space for Indians and other Asians to live on their lands. You heard everything he said, right? How blacks and Indians, right, are similar. They've both been colonized, you know, racism, this and that, Indians living on black land, all this stuff. If you know all of these things that he just said, why are you Indians still participating in the discrimination against black people when you know it's wrong? You know it's morally wrong, and you know all this information about history. So shouldn't that make you stop discriminating against black people if you know all this stuff that happened in the past? That's not right? Since pre-colonial times, I'm not talking about colonial powers taking indentured laborers over there. Uh, we have evidence of like shipwrecks of slave ships and Asians and Indians washing up on African shores and staying there ever since. Make it make sense, right? How can South Asians be so uncultured and not recognize these things? Especially in our eyes and other uh, South Asian groups, mm, I don't care how many generations you've been living there, but living there and still holding anti-black, anti-African, this like Indian superiority, African inferiority complex. How, how dare you, how? <laughs> and to top it all off, Dravidians, my people, how can we be this way, knowing full well that we are considered in the same category of blackness in our own country? If you've ever been called Kalu, Karp, Koranga, Jungli, Blackie, you know those are the exact same slurs that are used against Africans. In 2017, there was a case of racially motivated assaults against uh, African university students in New Delhi. And here's what this motherfucker had to say about it, right? This is Tarun Vijay, by the way. He used to be a member of the Indian parliament, part of the BJP party. If you know, you know. Um, okay, here's what he had to say about those attacks to Al Jazeera in an interview. All right, so trying to make the case that Indians can't be racist, he says, if we were racist, why would the entire South, you know, the Tamils, you know, Kerala, Karnataka, and Andhra, why do we live with them? We have blacks, black people around us. I don't know what the fuck this bozo was going for. It looks like he was trying to humanize black people somehow, but it just ended up dehumanizing us alongside of them. So like... Solidarity, I guess. I wish. If you don't know, uh, phenotypically speaking, just how black uh, Dravidian people can get, because you're looking at me, I don't get enough sun, you haven't seen me in the summertime, here are some pictures. This is my uncle, my actual uncle, my mom's youngest brother. This is my other uncle. Here's my cousin, uh, the one on the right with his nunba. Well, you can look at both of them for an example. Saving the best for last, here's my dad with me as a baby when he used to have hair, and he used to grow that out much thicker. It used to be a full-on afro. 
He and my mom met and married in Oman, where I was born. And when they were dating, people used to ask my mom all the time, I've asked my dad, how does that make you feel? And he's like, no offense taken, because Sudanese people are beautiful. East Africans are beautiful. And I take that one step further, Africans are beautiful. And no one can be you, and that's why they want control of your bodies. So to continue with the question, if it makes no sense, why is there this anti-African sentiment in our South Asian community? So I ask myself this question, I have no idea where to start to find answers, so I just went to Google and I typed in, why are Indians racist to black people? I did that this morning after seeing the TikTok that I'm stitching and I found this interview. It's called Africa Holds Up a Mirror to India. It's an interview with Shobana Shankar. She's an associate professor at Stony Brook University in African studies. And she's being um, interviewed by Zachariah Mampili. I'm sorry if I mispronounced uh, his last name, I'm not sure. Um, he is a PhD, also a professor at um, the City University of New York and uh, also in African Studies. I don't know if I said that already. Oh, and here you go. There's that quote by Tarun Vijay. I urge you to read through this um, interview in its entirety. But as you can see, a lot of it, especially in the beginning, is focused on Shobana's book, as it says there. It is called An Uneasy Embrace, Africa, India, and the Specter of Race. I got this book this morning. I finished it in about five, six hours because it is an academic book, but man, is it an easy read. It's got citations, it's got references. Um, and yeah, get this book. 12 euro is what I paid for it uh, to get the ebook. 20 if you get it in paperback. It's a very small price to pay to get your head in the right space to really do the work and undo the mess that we're in. And here are the two biggest takeaways that I got from this book as like the biggest answers that I had for my question, right? First biggest takeaway of mine from this uh, was when I learned about the sheer amount of work that has been done and is still being done today by Afrocentrist intellectuals to expand the um, theoretical framework of blackness in order to include Dravidian people specifically in it uh, and that way we can fight together against Indo-pessimism and Afro-pessimism together, which I thought was amazing. Um, a lot of that work was uh, pioneered by the first president of Senegal. His name was Lepol Sangor, excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, he did extensive research on this. Unfortunately, it did seem to me that it was very one-sided, like it was a lot of work being done by Africans and very few South Asian or Dravidian collaborators in that. Um, and it doesn't even matter if we're like, if there's no data that supports that we come from Africans because for the time being, there isn't. Um, just the spiritual concept of that work, of that effort really spoke to me. My second biggest takeaway from this book, and I'll leave you with this, um, it comes right from the last page of the book. I don't mind giving this away because I think it's super valuable. Uh, Shobana Shankar goes ahead and says that uh, Indian anti-blackness is a myth. And it's kind of like, whoa, 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 wait a second. You just spent like 200 and something pages saying that uh, this is a real thing and that we need to work against it. There's been work being done against it and all that, right? How can you say it's a myth? If I'm understanding her correctly, and I hope to God that I am, what she's trying to say is that anti-blackness is not an Indian thing. It's not something that is inherent to the South Asian community. We've learned it from someone somewhere outside of ourselves. Gee, I wonder who. Professor Shankar goes on to talk about a slew of other things like um, Hinduism in Africa, um, the specifically South African problem with Indians, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of other stuff. So please get this book, read it, talk about it in your in families. Let's get this in our community. We got to get this in the African community as well. We have a lot of post-colonial chains to break. Uh, we specifically are hurting the wrong people. We're hurting ourselves. And yeah, let's work. I don't think y'all understand. Some of y'all parents would genuinely turn down your significant other if they're darker than you. Itni kali hai. Last time I said this, the internet came after me. Even though there are hundreds, actually thousands of women who can relate to that. And for those arguing colorism doesn't exist in India, just because you have never experienced doesn't mean the problem doesn't exist. Even though right now my skin color may be lighter, when I lived in India, that was my reality. And for those worried about me doing makeup, my foundation exactly matches my skin color. I'm not wearing a foundation to make myself lighter. And beauty, my friends, 
has the wings to fly free. Hi friends, let me start by saying it's India so there's gonna be background noise. I'm gonna tell you about one experience of colorism while I've been here. So we threw an 80th birthday party for my grandma. Classic Indian family fashion, we invited like two million people. That's so cultural for us. And in all honesty, my immediate family was there but there was also a bunch of people who to me are pretty much randos but they claim to be in some way distantly related to me. So of course, I was being polite and saying hello to everyone. And these ladies come up to me. They're definitely like my grandma's age, older. And there's a group of like six of them. And they say, oh, is that you, Karishma? We haven't seen you in like 10 years. And I have no idea who they are, but I'm obviously going to be polite. So I was like, oh, it's nice to see you. And they say, this is what they say in Hindi. And Hindi is my first language, so I 100% understand what these women are saying. In English, that means she has nice features, but her color is a little... Mm, and they're commenting on my body and my skin color to each other as if I'm not even standing there. And you know, I was shocked, but this is so normal in India for people to comment on your body right in front of you and it be your own people. Colorism is a big part of Indian culture. The lighter you are, the better you are treated. It's like you being light skin is like a prize. Like everyone likes you when you light skin, they do favors for you and they treat you better. And that all goes back to what I said. If you know it's wrong to participate in colorism, stop doing it. Treat everybody the same, the dark skin and the light skin. It's women. And some of these women are just as dark or darker than me. How much do you have to hate yourself to say that about somebody else? Then at the same party on a separate occasion, another group of these kind of rando people that claim to be related to me, again, they say, we haven't seen you in years. And they say, Now, in English, what this means is, she doesn't look bad now, but when she was younger, she was kind of hard to look at. For context, when I was younger, my front two teeth would stick out, and I couldn't wear contacts, so I had really thick glasses, but I was just as dark as this. And I do wonder what kind of person you have to be to say that about a 10-year-old girl. Colorism is so deeply entrenched here that people feel okay saying that to your face as if they're telling you that you have something stuck in your teeth. Years ago, this probably would have bothered me. And I really did want to cuss these ladies out, but I kind of just took a step away. I stepped outside just to take a breath and I didn't want to make the whole kind of party about me because it was about my grandma celebrating her 80th. But if there's any other brown girls out there that are insecure about their skin color, anyone telling you that you are not enough or that you're not beautiful really just hates themselves. So to that I say, fuck the aunties. You do you, go out in the sun, wear white, because they're just projecting. And I wish little Karishma knew this, but you're kind of perfect just the way you are. Okay, a lot of people were offended and confused when I corrected someone who called me black and said that I'm actually Asian. I want to clarify that this isn't coming from a place of superiority, avoiding association with blackness, or just thinking that there's something wrong with being black. It's because I'm literally not black. I'm South Indian. <laughs> that has its own historical and cultural identity. And India being in Asia, specifically South Asia, makes me an Asian American woman. I don't go through life as a black woman. I don't deal with the same challenges and prejudices that the black community faces. So it would be disingenuous and inappropriate for me to call myself black or not correct someone when they call me black even though I have dark skin too. This comment kind of ticked me off because I feel like it's invalidating a lot of races and ethnicities that exist outside of white and black and we're valid. Was there a point of time in your life when you thought that I need to bleach my skin or whiten my skin? Yeah, I thought, I thought many times. No, Indians were not supposed to be fairer. India receives more than 250 sunny days. So vitamin D is directly absorbed by skin, hence more melanin content, hence the darker skin. There was time when I was a teenage girl, I could see people who, like girls who were fairer than me, you know, they were uh, treated in a different way. Uh, you could see the school teachers or everyone as like, oh, she's so cute, she's so pretty. So that time we what we feel, okay, I want to be that person. Yeah, I've been bullied for my skin tone and that too by my teachers. Yeah, one of my teachers bullied me. I mean, I was in like uh, 
class third or fourth. I was just a child. I don't know that I have a dark tone and all. My friends who are like a little darker than me, they sometimes feel that you know still that I should put tomato on my skin and this on my skin to become fair. So their self confidence has been really affected. Nobody hates Indian people more than other Indian people. You live abroad, you get called whitewash. You're from India, you get called a fog. You're too dark. You're too light. You're too religious. You're too modern. There's no winning. So I simply decide to vibe and tell people like this. Okay, I can't be the only one. I just got off the phone with my mom, and this is after ten years of not talking. We're like just now facetiming here and there, and all she can tell me on the phone is different home remedies. to lighten my skin or lighten the color of my lips and make them pink or lighten my eye color like everything is to make me look lighter and honestly at one point i got so angry and just lost it because this is ridiculous it's 2023 and i'm not a kid anymore and i used to cry about it as a kid not anymore I'm finally in a good place where I'm happy with who I am.